the emperor, the emperor's new suit, the emperor's new clothes. Many many years ago, lived an emperor who thought so much of new clothes that he spent all his money in order to obtain them. His only ambition was to be always well dressed. His only design, very great design, ambition, was to be always well dressed. He did not care. For his soldiers, he did not care for his soldiers, and the theater did not amuse him. The only thing, in fact, he thought was to try it out and show a new suit of clothes. The only thing, in fact, he thought anything of was to try it out and show. A new suit of clothes. He had a coat for every hour of the day, and as one would say of the king, he is in his cabinet. Any kind, any any information about a king, he is in his cabinet. So one could say of him,、uh, the emperor is in his dressing room. The emperor is in his dressing room. The red city where he resided, where he resided, where he stayed, where he lived, was very gay, very gay, very happy. Every day, many strangers from all parts of the globe, from all parts of the world, all parts of the globe, arrive. The red city where he resided was very gay. Every day, many strangers from all parts of the globe arrive. One day, two swindlers, swindlers, burglar, liars, prophets. Let's have a look. Two swindlers, fraudsters. Someone who used deception to derive someone else of money or positions. Yeah, the swindle, swindlers, came to the city. They made people believe that they were weavers. 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 A person who weaves fabric, who make fabric, who make clothes. Tailors. Believe that they were tailors. One day, two swindlers came to the city. They made people believe that. They were weavers, and declared they could manufacture the finest clothes to be imagined. These swindlers declared that they could manufacture, they could fabricate the finest clothes to be imagined. Their colors and patterns, they said, were not only exceptionally beautiful, but The clothes made of their material possess the wonderful qualities of being invisible to any man who was unfit for his office or unpardonably stupid, strongly stupid, inexcusable, inexcusable stupidity. Okay, the colors of the clothes and patterns of clothes were not only exceptionally beautiful. But the clothes made of their material possess the wonderful qualities, being invisible to any man who was unfit for his office or unpardonably stupid. That must be wonderful clothes, thought the emperor. If I were to be dressed in a suit made of this cloth, I should be able to find out which man in my empire. Were unfit for the places. To distinguish, I could distinguish the clever from the stupid. I must have this cloak woven for me without delay. I must have this cloak made, woven for me, without any delay. And he gave a large sum of money to the swindlers in advance, of course. 
that they should set to work, begin the work without any loss of time, without any any delay, without any loss of time. And he gave a lot of money to the swindlers in advance that they should set to work without any loss of time. They set up two looms. Two looms. So what's that a loom? It's an apparatus for making fabric by weaving yarn or thread. Okay? A torn materials for making fabric. The swindlers pretended to be very hard at work, but they did nothing whatever on the looms. They pretended to be very hard at work, but they didn't do anything whatever on the looms. They asked for the finest silk and the most precious gold cloth. They asked for silk and gold cloth. On the gold, they did away with. They did away with. They hide. They hide away. They bring them away. They consume them and walked at the empty looms till late at night. Haha. <laughs> they walked at the empty looms till late at night. I should very much like to know how they are getting on with the cloth. Told the emperor, but he felt rather uneasy. He felt a little bit uneasy when he remembered that he, who was not fit for his office, could not see, could not see it, could not see the material. Personally, he was of opinion that he had nothing to fear. It means the emperor himself. He told that he had nothing to fear, yet. He thought it advisable to send some someone else, somebody else first, to see how matters stood. Everybody in the town knew what a remarkably quality the stuff possessed, and all were anxious to see how bad or stupid their neighbors were. This moment, this kind of situation, created a an unstable. Unstable situation, position among people. Everybody in the town knew what a remarkable quality the stuff possessed, and all, all, were anxious to see how bad or stupid their neighbors were. I shall send my honest old minister to the weavers," told the emperor. "He can judge." He can judge best how the stuff. He can judge best how the stuff looks for his intelligence, and nobody understand his office better than he. The good old minister went into the room where the swindler sat before the empty looms. Heaven preserve us, he thought. Heaven preserve us. Oh my God, he thought. And opened his eyes wide. I cannot see anything at all. But he did not say so. Both swindlers requested him to come near, and asked him if he did not admire the exquisite pattern, exquisite, the excellent, the marvelous pattern, and the beautiful colors, pointing to the empty looms. The poor old minister tried his very best. All of the capacity, but he could see nothing, for there was nothing to be seen, nothing to be seen. Oh dear, he thought, can I be so stupid? I should never have thought so, and nobody must know it. Is it possible that I am not fit for my office? No, no, I cannot say that. I was unable to see the glow. I will not reveal the truth. Now, have you got nothing to say? Said one of the swindlers. What he pretended to be be very busily weaving. He pretended to to be weaving very very busily. Oh, it's very very pretty, exceedingly beautiful. 
replied the old minister, looking through his glasses. What a beautiful pardon. What brilli brilliant colors. I shall tell the emperor that I like the cloth very much. We are pleased to hear that, said the chair weavers, and described to him cloth, the colors and explained the curious pardon. We are pleased to hear that. And they described to him, to the minister, the colors, and also the curious pattern. And of course, the old minister listened attentively, that he may relate, he may relate to the emperor what they said, and so he did, what that he may retell. They make or show a connection between, okay, or recount or narrate or report, okay, or communicate. Now, the swindlers ask for money, more, more money, silk and gold cloth, which they require for weaving. They kept everything for themselves, and not a thread, no thread at all, and not a thread came near the loom. Okay. Not a thread from cotton or filament or fiber or yarn or string, kind of string, okay? Long, thin strand of cotton using sewing or weaving. The swindlers continue as hitherto, as before, as up until now, as hitherto. Okay, as previously up until now. Until now or until the point in time under discussion to work at the empty looms. Now the swindler asked for more money, asked for more silk and more gold cloth, which they required for weaving. They kept everything for themselves and not a treat came near the loom. But they continue as hitherto to work as the empty looms. Soon afterwards, the emperor sent another honest courtier to the weavers to see how they were getting on. Another courtier, another person worked for the king. Courtier, an attendant, a lord, okay? A person who attends royal court as a companion or advisor to the king or queen. And if the cloth was nearly finished, okay, to see if the cloth was nearly finished, to see whether the cloth was nearly finished, like the old minister, he looked and looked, but could see nothing. He could not see anything, as there was nothing to be seen. Is it not a beautiful piece of cloth? asked the two swindlers, sewing and explaining the magnificent pattern, which, however, did not exist. I am not stupid, said the man. Is it therefore my good appointment for which I am not fit? It is very strange, but I must not let anyone know it. And he praised the cloth. He praised the cloth. Okay. He has spread warm approval. He has expressed his admiration of the cloth which he did not see and expressed his joy at the beautiful colors and the fine pattern. It is very excellent, he said to the emperor. Everybody in the whole town talked about the precious gold. At last, the emperor wished to sit himself while it was still on the loom. With a number of courtiers, with many courtiers, including Chu who had already been there, he went to the two clever swindlers, who now worked as hard as they could, but without using any thread, of course. Is it not magnificent? said the two old statesmen, the two old courtiers, who had been there before. Your Majesties must admire the colors and the pattern. And then they pointed to the empty looms, for 
the image, the others could see the gold. What is this? Thought the emperor. I did not see anything at all. That is terrible. Am I stupid? Am I unfit to be emperor? That would indeed be the most dreadful thing that could happen to me. That would indeed be the most horrible thing that could happen to me, causing or involving great suffering, fear, or unhappiness, or extremely bad or serious thing, thing that could happen to me. The emperor thought. Really, he said, turning to the weavers. Your clothes had has our most racist approval. Really, your clothes has our most racist approval. And nodding contentedly, and nodding contentedly, contentedly, in a way to express happiness or satisfaction. The emperor was very, very satisfied. He looked at the empty loom for. He did not like to say that he saw nothing. All his attendants, who were with him, looked and looked, and although they could not see anything more than the others, they said, "Like the emperor, it is very beautiful." Okay, and all advised him to wear the new magnificent clothes at a great procession, which was soon to take place. It is magnificent, beautiful, excellent. One heard them say. Everybody seemed to be delighted, and the emperor appointed the two swindlers, imperial court weavers. They become formal weavers, tailors for the imperial court for the king. The two night, sorry, the whole night previous to the day on which. The procession was to take place. The swindlers pretended to work and burn more than sixteen candles. People could see that they were busy to finish the emperor's new suit. They pretended to take the cloth from the loom and walked about in the air with big scissors, and sew with needles without thread. And said at last, "The emperor's new suit is ready now. The emperor's new suit is ready now." The emperor and all his barons then came to the hall. Baron, okay, same meaning as the attendant, a member, a member of the oldest order, the British no nobility. The swindlers held their arms up. As if they held something in their hands and said, "These are the trousers. This is the coat, and here is the clock, the clock, and so on. They are all as light as cobweb, the cobweb, cobweb. It is a, it is a spider's web. It is spider spider web." Especially when old and dusty, cobweb, and one must feel as if one had nothing at all upon the body. This is how they describe, but that is just the beauty of them. Okay, they are all as light as a cobweb, and one must feel as if one had nothing at all upon the body, and this is just. The beauty of them, of this kind of a material, indeed," said all the courtiers. But they could not see anything, for there was nothing to be seen. Does it please your Majesty now to racelessly undress? Please undress yourself," said the swindlers, "that we may assist your Majesty in putting on the new suit before the large looking class." The emperor undressed, and the swindler pretended to put a new suit upon him, one piece after another, and the emperor looked at himself in the glass from every side. How well they looked! How well they fit! Said all. 
What a beautiful pattern! What fine colors! That is a magnificent suit of clothes. The master of the ceremony, the master of ceremonies, announced that the bearers of the canopy, the bearer, someone who support the canopy, the canopy is kind of blue to cover from the sun. An ornamental cloth covering hung or held up over something, especially a throne or bed. The bearers. Of the canopy were ready. The canopy, which was to be carried in the procession, of course, everything was ready. I am ready," said the emperor. "Does not my suit fit me marvelously? I am ready. Does not my suit fit me marvelously?" Then he turned once more to the looking glass, that people should think he admired his garments, the clothes. The chamberlains, the chamberlains. Those supporters, those、uh, bearers, of,、uh, um, those、um, taking his clothes、uh, behind the, the king, chamberlains, who were to carry the train, stretched their hands to the ground as if they lifted up a train, and pretended to hold something in their hands. They did not allow people to know that they could not see anything. The train here is the trail. The trail. Of the、um, the cloth, it is a long piece of material attached to the back of the formal dress or the robe that trails along the ground. Okay, for example, the bride wore a cream silk dress with the train. The behind of the cloth, a very formal cloth. Okay, so the chamberlains. Who were to carry the train? Stretch their hands to the ground as if they lifted up a train and pretended to hold something in their hands. They don't lie. They didn't lie. People to think that they could not see anything. The emperor marched in the procession under the beautiful canopy, and all who saw him in the street and out of the windows exclaimed. Indeed, the emperor's new suit is incomparable. What a long train he has! What a long train he has! Beautiful clothes. How well it fits him! Nobody wished to let orders know he saw nothing, for then he would have been unfit for his office, or too stupid. Okay. Because people avoid to appear stupid, so they lie. So they lie. They don't say the truth. They don't say what they see. Never emperors' clothes were more admired. But he has nothing. On, but he has nothing on at all. Said a little child at last. Good heavens! Listen to the voice of an innocent child. Said the father, and one whispered to the other what the child had said. People just whisper. Very low sound, low tone. But he has nothing at all. But he has nothing on, nothing on him, on his body at all. Cry at last the home people. Cry at last the crowd. That made a deep impression upon the emperor, for it seemed to him that they were right. They were right, but it seemed to him, he was not sure. He was not sure of that. But he thought to himself, "Now, I must bear up to the end. I must support up to the end." And the chamberlains walked with still greater dignity. <laughs> They walk with more dignity than before, as if they carry the train which did not exist. Thus is the end of our story today. Thank for listening, and surprise to the channel if you haven't already.